capitulated, gave in, and uh, they accepted what became known as the Prussian Union. The Prussian Union also became popular in Saxony, which was another uh, uh, geographical area from which Lutherans emigrated to form the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. I'm just going to use one more illustration, then I'm going to get back to Indonesia. Why is this so serious when you have people communing together who don't believe the same thing? Let me illustrate. Imagine for a moment that the Minnesota Vikings invite the Minnesota Twins to play a game. And they get together on the field, the Vikings in their uniforms, the Twins in theirs, the Vikings with their gear, the Twins with theirs. And one of the Vikings says to one of the Twins, what are you doing with that bat? And he says, oh, I'm going to hit the ball with the bat. And then the twin says to one of the Vikings, what are you doing with all those pads? Oh, that's when I tackle you. <laughs> I need the protection. Now, what kind of a game is this going to be? It's going to be total chaos. Why? They aren't coming to do the same thing. And in the Lord's Supper, when the Reformed and Lutheran come, Lutherans come together, you have uh, what I would call theological chaos because they are not coming to do the same thing. Lutherans are coming to receive forgiveness, life, and salvation, the grace of God. The Reformed are coming to perform a pious act of obedience out of love for Jesus. Gospel, law. All right? It's as opposite as it can possibly be. And these two things come together. Uh, this, is, this is not good. But by the way, I think you may know uh, the ELCA uh, has not only declared that you can uh, be ordained if you're a homosexual, uh, what I think far worse is that they have admitted to their altars those who deny the real presence of Jesus' body and blood in the Lord's Supper. And this happened a long time ago. So they're in complete church fellowship with the United Methodist Church, the Reformed Church in America, uh, the United Church of Christ, and so every week, you have people communing together who don't come to do the same thing. Some are coming for grace, some are not. Now, in the 1800s, Union missionaries were sent to Indonesia. And all of these 12 Lutheran churches here were formed by Union missionaries. Uh, so lots of times they call themselves Lutheran. Uh, they don't call themselves Calvinists, but they frequently call themselves Reformed. So you have churches that consider themselves both Lutheran and Reformed. And these three fellows that met with me in Fort Wayne said, you know what? We're tired of being both. We want to be Lutheran. Would you please come and teach us what it means to be Lutheran? Uh, and how could we say no? What a tremendous invitation. So we went to Indonesia to do that. Now, uh, the consequences for Indonesia, uh, I think I've explained already. They don't know what they believe in a number of different areas. Some of the pastors will be very Lutheran. Other pastors will be quite Reformed. And um, they have tried very hard not to argue. Uh, but the, these fellows that I've been uh, talking to have said, we can't do this anymore. We want to confess a pure confession and not withhold the truth from our people. So it's a wonderful thing that's, that's going on there, and we've asked to be involved. i got to go behind you. All right. What happened? This must be upside down. <laughs> so here you see some of the pastors that uh, came together for our first conference. Um, it's 70. Uh, if you look at this uh, thing here, you'll see our budget is uh, for, what does it say there, 19000 for Indonesia? 20000 uh, We brought 70 pastors in to teach them. Uh, I think that's pretty good for the money, for a week of instruction. We pay, they, they can't afford to come if we don't pay for it. They don't have the money, so we pay for the conference center, we pay for their board and room while they're there, and we also 
pay part of their transportation to get to the conference. And then we pay for the teacher uh, who comes to teach them. Uh, the topic this year, here's another uh, photograph. The topic this year was uh, the office of the ministry. Uh, guess what problem they are dealing with in Indonesia? Women's ordination. They have a huge variety of opinion on that. And so uh, Bonar, in particular, requested that the first uh, series of lectures be on the Office of the Holy Ministry. Here you see a couple of the uh, Indonesian pastors in their Indonesian dress. Uh, very, very attractive. Uh, here's Bonar Lombantobing explaining a point of Lutheran teaching. Uh, the, um, and then you see the guys here. Uh, uh, we go from 9 to 5 with uh, a break in the morning. Uh, lunch and a break in the afternoon. So it's a it's a pretty intense course. They get a lot of instruction. Uh, here you see the teacher. Some of you will recognize him. Uh, his name is Rolf Preuss. It's the first time on any of the conferences I have organized that I've chosen a relative, uh, but he happens to be very knowledgeable on the office of the Holy Ministry uh, for a number of reasons. He's had a lot of uh, experience in studying that particular topic. So we asked him to be the teacher, and uh, there you see the instructor. Now just to give you an idea of how important this teaching is, um, I would say 90% of the people were very receptive, but not all of them. Uh, and at one point, when Rolf talked about women's ordination one of the men said well I understand that that's what Paul teaches you've made that very clear but I don't agree with Paul <laughs> all right so what do you think we ought to teach about next year <laughs> perhaps biblical authority or uh, the doctrine of the word something like that they need a lot of teaching um, I think there's a couple uh, slides back Bonar is a seminary professor. He said that what Rolf taught during the four days he taught in Indonesia was more theological instruction that the seminary students get in their entire time at the seminary. They're taught uh, the social uh, sciences, uh, they're taught history, they're taught languages, they get very little theology. So it's not really surprising to hear a guy say, well, I don't agree with Paul. He probably has not had a course on the doctrine of the Word of God. Uh, here you see Reverend Nelson and Linda Siragar. Uh, he is a, um, a leader in the uh, HKBP. And it is very possible that he will be elected as their bishop or their president. The present president is, is stepping down. And this is a church of, uh, I believe it's 350,000, no, 3,500,000 people. It's quite a bit bigger than the Missouri Senate. And he is one of the leading candidates uh, to be their next uh, president. Uh, here you see how they honor you in Indonesia. I actually did a little bit of teaching too. Uh, they give you these shawls and wrap you up in it. And in front of that, they placed our dinner uh, for the evening. Here you get a better idea of what they're <laughs> <laughs> This is the lower jaw of a uh, boar. And uh, since uh, Rolf and I were the honored guests, they brought this to us as a special gift for dinner. And I was sitting next to Bonar, and I said, what do I do with this? <laughs> uh, do I eat it? And he said, well, that's up to you. Uh, it was given to you. You're welcome to eat it. But if I could make a suggestion, if you take it to one of the other tables, uh, and at the, the, the guys were generally divided by ethnic background, OK, where they came from, a bunch of different ethnic groups. If you take it to one of the tables uh, and give it to them, they will be the